Sarah. How are you? 581. I'm okay. How are you? Uh, Still in sunny Costa Rica, but not for much longer, I think. Okay. Mom's on the mend. I love that. That's what I love to hear. And then when you go home or wherever... (laughs) Yeah, wherever, oh, wherever, wherever it is that you'll be mark. going. I know. They keep telling me on forums to like put my oh residence my and I'm like... What do you mm. put down? <sighs> Fucking name. I don't know. I switch off between my last oh my one and my God. brother's address. Wow. So I don't know. That's okay, what they say, yeah. you know, like even people that are unhoused, like it's hard to get a job because if you don't have an address... Right. Y- you can't really fill out the application. Right, and they're like, what's wrong with you, weirdo? Why don't you have a place to live? (laughs) Okay, so whenever you go home or wherever, then Mm -hmm. what will Sally do? She is going to have a, uh, well, at that time, her bones will be healed enough for her to be able to put weight on her feet. Yeah. And she is already getting more mobile, like she could put weight on one of her heels. And Mm -hmm. so um, we have a, this is so hilarious, we have a, a, wheelie office chair you know office chair with mm-hmm. wheels and uh thank god she has a tile floor so i put her on that because we've oh moved, upgraded from the wheelchair so I, I lift her onto that and then i roll her around the house where you she needs to go i do mm-hmm. and so she is now getting to the point where she can kind of like push herself on that with the wall like along the wall and kind of with her heel so she's just getting stronger and stronger to be able to we, and today she was able to um, move herself from Le Toilette to the wheelie chair for the first time. So oh, wow. big moves, big moves we're making over here. Isn't that Gonna amazing? Going to be running in no time. So I'm not. So by the time I leave, to answer the question, she should be mobile enough. But I have somebody who's going to come in and clean the house and do grocery shopping and make sure she has food and like the basic stuff and check on her and take out the trash and stuff like that. For and so even with there. all of the, what's happened, she is not yeah. tempted to move back to the Western world or the no first way. world. No. no way. Okay. Yeah. She's where she wants to be. Yeah. That's and shocking. I mean, I got to say for, for places to get stuck <laughs> when yeah. you're, you're in a caregiver position. I mean, uh, no, uh, yeah, I see I that. got here ain't too bad. I can see that. I would just think when you have an accident like she did, that you would emphasize like just being around your yeah. loved ones more than anything. Yeah. But she really does not enjoy the U.S. of A. Probably no, because she, she was on the terrorist list for a while. Pro- <laughs> probably. <laughs> the U.S. of A. didn't love her so much either. So. The feeling was mutual. <laughs> yeah, the feeling was <laughs> Right, it really puts They're like, oh yeah, well, we're back. putting you on this list. <laughs> right. Oh gosh, yeah, okay, that well, just I'm got done. just got got cleared up. By the way, I know she. What did they call that? Is was it expunged? Yes. Nice. Yes. I sat in many hours of lines for <laughs> that one. Good lord, <laughs> stateside. It's like like I people had think to do we're joking, but she was genuinely no, on the FBI. Terrorist. We're not kidding. We're not. And you know how much work I had to do <laughs> to get her off that list. She's not sitting in the the federal buildings, in in the good old U.S. Right. of A. Mm-mm. I am during mm. COVID. I mean, come on. You know the Bible says we Fuck all pay in. for the sins of our parents, and they Jeez. meant that literally in your what? case. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, what is it? I see. I've seen something on on Twitter or on Instagram. What is it? Instagram or somewhere floating around that's like oh my god my back is so sore from like carrying the weight of being my parents favorite child (laughs) (laughs) right it's a big burden the burden uh but no we're surviving surviving not thriving over here as they say Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah you know we're watching a lot of um tv and documentaries I kind of well, no, it wasn't a mistake to to watch this. It was wonderful that we watched it after mom's surgery. But have you heard about the doctor that they called Doctor Death? Sure. Oh my gosh! You when mean we the, No, the oh. other Doctor Death. This is this is a spine surgeon. Okay. Who's essentially a uh, like sociopathic narcissist with like most insane delusions of grandeur I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay. He's a real doctor. 
in Texas who threw a bunch of like kind of loopholes but not really more just like cracks in the medical system Mm -hmm. did not get the kind of training that he needed and convinced (laughs) everybody that he was uh, amazing uh, and he ended up paralyzing multiple people murdering multiple people and was like one of the first doctors that was ever tried for and the, the impression that is does. that this wasn't just negligence. He actually enjoyed <gasps> harming people. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and some of the things, what he ended up getting, getting, uh, uh, going away for was elder abuse because mm. it, and it was, that was one of the, like, it, they had to be really careful. The prosecutors had to be really careful in how, in like what they chose to prosecute him for because yeah. it's so difficult. If you haven't seen that or listened to the podcast, Dr. Death, or, um, uh, there's also a now a TV show, a series on Hulu with, um, who is it? Joshua Jackson and Alec Baldwin and Christian Slater. Oh my God. I just uh-huh. three people from a TV show. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, that was like a rush. She is firing on Woo! all cylinders. She got all firing. celebrity names. Correct. Oh, this is incredible. So it, it's a good day. Um, uh, yes. So all of them are in it. It is so good, but it is terrifying. And one of the la- the on the the very last scene and the very last frame of the show says this will happen again. Yeah. So it's, what? it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. That doctors can just. And what I learned from that show, I mean, so many terrifying things, yeah. but. So one, you would assume I, as a therapist, have mm-hmm. to do 3,000 hours mm-hmm. of therapy and, like, therapy-related stuff, uh, which I joyfully do, um, to, <laughs> get my, <laughs> to get my license, to be able to, like, qualify to take the – sit for the b- exams and everything. Yes. There is no actual number of hours – Mm. That a spine surgeon needs to spend in surgery before he is granted basically access to your spine. They just have to take a test. They just have to do their residency and like make it through the, those years. But wow. if they're not, there's nothing like, a, or at least in Texas where this was mm-hmm. happening, there's nothing to count the number of hours like i have to i have a summary like i have mm-hmm. to turn in this whole like yeah it's all documented has, uh, yeah, all documented mm-hmm. a supervisor signs off on it there's nothing like that and this guy was on the side doing some like biomedical research with like stem cells and people were more interested in funding him for that and the doctors he were working mm. he was working with were like oh no no go ahead do time D- do that oh, right. and total conflict of interest total like quid pro quo stuff and ended up he he had only sat in i think it was on something like 300 surgeries or something like that maybe less he had he had i i want to get the numbers right i believe it was 38 surgeries he did and only three had no consequences Okay, so that's what I was going to ask is whether he decided the outcome based on like if he liked the person or... Who knows? You know. I don't know. We still don't really know. Okay, so he wasn't obviously saying like this person I'm going to do a proper surgery and this person I'm going to fuck them right. up. No, okay. it wasn't like... It almost looked like... And there were scenes from the show. The show was done so well. There were scenes in the show that hinted at him believing that he could come up with a different way of doing things like he's <laughs> going to reinvent the wheel okay and one of the scenes he gets this woman pregnant and he's building a crib for her and they're putting the crib together you know it's a fucking ikea crib right it's like they've got all the parts or whatever it's from like they've got the parts and it's like you got the instructions and it's only a certain amount of parts He's supposed to screw in a screw, and he goes, hand me the pliers. And she goes, for a screw? And he goes, yeah, it's called torque, blah, blah, blah. There, you know, there's oh, more than God. one. And that, it, it's a that terrifying guy. moment where it's like, oh, fuck. He thinks that he doesn't have to follow the rules. 
Yeah. And you just see this, like, narcissist. Oh, it's so... Right, Joshua right, Jackson right. does... So- I'm getting, like, chills thinking about it right now. It's so... And the scariest thing is knowing this is fucking real. <clears throat> well, so I have read books about women who've done this, you know, like those nurses that intentionally kill patients. Mm. Like, pretty much any serial killer woman <laughs> besides, like... Aileen Vornos right. or whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> um, did it in this weird kind of like thing where they're in a nurturing role, but then they oh, go God. dark. And it seems like it matches the model mm. of, you know, those people that are arsonists that also are firefighters. Yeah. Yes. Like, he did they ha- want to yes. do something bad so then they could be the hero. Ooh. Cut, but it yeah, doesn't it cut, sound ooh. like that was going on with this guy. Oh, it's so terrifying. It felt like he did have this I'm going to save you thing, though. Okay, okay. Like, he told all of them, I'm going to be the one. Susie, he op- his, he was not getting, cl- like, not getting patience. He was, people were, people, like, word was starting to go around that he wasn't good. His friend said, you can operate on me. He fucking paralyzed his friend. No. His best friend, Susie. Whoa. Paralyzed him, quadriplegic. And he was Did one surgery. fine with it. He wasn't sorry. He never visited him at one time afterwards. What the fuck? Isn't that fucking terrifying? Yeah. Oh, and it's, oh, 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 oh. And people are fucked up. And then they, I, I assume people started filing malpractice suits or what? Yes. People okay. started filing malpractice suits. And then what would happen is the hospital did not want to be did not want to have any liability and because he was still Mm -hmm. a resident the hospital didn't want it to come back on them for any like uh uh you know you guys hired the wrong person kind of thing Mm -hmm. so they suspended him but in the state of texas i don't know if this is every state but in the state of texas you do not have to report a suspension to the medical board if it's under 30 days so he was suspended for 21 days and because of that, you don't have to report it to the medical board. So if you went to go look up that doctor, any right. doctor, to be like, has this guy been suspended? It'd be like, nope, even Chip if shape. he was suspended 10 times <clears throat> for 21 days. Huh? Terrifying. I'll tell you what's not terrifying. And that Please. is when you get a wonderful box from KiwiCo that you can make the activities inside with your children or your loved ones. Yes. How cool is that? Yes. Now, see, teaching them the right skills <laughs> in STEM and science from a young age. Right. Curiosity and maybe a little empathy, too. Yes. So these boxes are designed so that they match the age range of your children. And they even have little baby ones. So they have panda crates oh. for helping panda babies. Panda crates. <laughs> it's just so cute. Right. They uh, support babies, you know, rapid development in those first two years when they're just like sponges of information. Yes. And it's just novel, you know, when you get something new and your kids are so into it and they don't even know they're learning. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's great for any age child that you have in your life. This is going to be such a nice gift. So your child will get a super cool hands-on science, art, or geography project delivered every month. It'll be like their favorite day of the month, I promise. They do all the hard work in figuring out what kids enjoy doing and what helps them learn, and then you can just have fun with them doing it. Redefine learning with play and get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with code BRAINCANDY at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com promo code BRAINCANDY. Come on. Yes. Yes. So uh, way better than uh, uh, oh god I'm just thinking. Way better than Dr. Scenes. Death. Way better than Dr. Death. I think about nice little things like that. Like adorable pandas. So, yeah. Um, but I think this was because, you know, my mom and I were talking about this all the time. And, you know, how the Internet's listening to us all the time, even though yeah. they say they're not. Sure. Um, I read another article in the New York Times about a British surgeon named, what's his name? Simon Bramhall. He got in trouble, which is like the appropriate term for it because I do not feel like the punishment fit the crime, but maybe, I don't know, you tell me. He burned his initials Mm. into three of his patients' livers. No. Like fucking signature. 
on like the branding, organs. right? Yes, yes. Just, he used just an argon beam, mark his which territory. is like yes, mm-hmm. SB onto the livers. Wow. Okay, and then how the hell oh. did we find find out? Well, somebody went in to do a, a second operation oh and noticed God. it. Stop mm-hmm. it. Follow-up operation. Can you imagine <gasps> if you were the doctor yes. and you opened them up right. and that's what was sitting in there? Oh, my God. Well, that's how they discovered it in this Dr. Death one, too. Another surgeon went in to do a, a repair oh job because the woman was like, I can't feel my legs. Something is ha- like this is worse. Yeah. They went in and the doctor was like, oh, my God. He had taken screws in and out in and out like he's he oh oh my god like put a screw in to a place and when when they were describing to the de- detective like it maybe it was just m- like mistake maybe it was a mistake he said if you cut into a t-bone steak and you were to run into a piece of wood wouldn't you know to stop and they're like yeah and he's like well that's the difference between muscle and bone and this guy didn't was jamming it into mm. like muscle and like, so you would know the difference. <sighs> ah! That is so disturbing. And I find it totally oh, fascinating when studying criminals, how frequently their undoing is because of things like that, their ego, yeah, where they want to leave their mark or mark <sighs> their territory or, you know, tease the cops or whatever it is. There's always yeah. some thing that they do just for their own gratification that ends up being the reason they get caught and it's so stupid yeah it really is and like what do you so take a guess at what the punishment what the sentencing oh, right. was for this the brand for guy. this guy well okay so th- his this as far as we know was his only no. act of either negligence or criminal behavior. Like, otherwise, the surgeries were fine. Correct. Oh, man. I would still think yeah. he should be, what's the word, oh, when you God. kick a doctor out of being a doctor? Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, have his, like, what, yeah, what yeah. do you call that? Yeah, why don't we have a Suspend- disbarred equivalent no, just, for doctors? Disbar- right, what the fuck do you call that? <laughs> but at any rate, I feel like he should yeah. not be able to practice uh, medicine. Me- right. I guess, uh, I don't know. Any other fines? Any, anything? Oh, yeah, lots of money. Oh, well, how about 10,000 pounds because no. it's in, in, no. in England and no. 120 hours of <gasps> free surgery, basically what? pro bono. You're letting this guy do more surgery that is insane. as a pr- punishment. Susie. I, I am speechless. Susie, help me with that one. <gasps> what the hell is that judge thinking? So apparently, he, because this was the sentence, because he pled guilty, and so Ugh. he accepted that what he did was cr- like not just ethically wrong but criminally wrong. It was <sighs> like this highly unusual and complex case. They said, and it ended up being what did they? It's something like assault. Yeah, it's assault, assault punished with a fine and community service, basically. I can't. I can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, but the other thing, maybe, is that the woman who he did it to came to his defense. And he said, even if he did put his initials on my transplanted liver, is it really that bad? I wouldn't have cared if he did it to me. The man saved my life. That's the thing. He must be very charming, which a lot of sociopaths are. Oh! And... He has these people thinking he's just like, I mean, that's what you would do if, like, you caught your kid skipping school, not when right. they're branding people's internal organs. Right. 120 hours of community service. I mean, I feel like we've given more out for, like, you know, a fucking parking ticket. Wow. Yeah. Let's imagine if he were black. <laughs> oh, Susie. Right? Susie. Oh, my God. I just am terrified. It's scary out there. Ah. Sarah's scared of doctors now. I know. I was like, I am so glad that I learned all of this, like, after my mom's surgery and yeah. all of, like, I I can't. I, like, 
It's so weird. You know, my mom freaks out when she she can't look at her x-rays. Like, they, they creep her out. But she doesn't mm. mind cleaning the area on her foot where there's currently <laughs> a metal rod going, oh my coming out of it. Oh, my God, coming out. Susie. Susie, yes, they have. It's one that's like just a placeholder, essentially. That we have to go in on Thursday and ha- or what the hell day, whatever day, Monday, and have it removed. I don't even know days anymore. Um, and we have to have it removed. Like it comes out. Oh, I'm gonna free. I'm gonna. Uh, 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 bleh. What? Stop! I was telling Sarah when we weren't recording how I had read this article in the New York Times about disgust, the the emotion of disgust, and how weirdly it's weird that humans are disgusted by a rotting corpse but not by a skeleton and then we decided it's the mysterious wetness Ah! 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 i'm picturing it it is dude (laughs) and like i think that's the issue with your mom's foot right because there's got to be some sort of juice going on (laughs) (laughs) i'm having a all the feelings i'm sorry that was mean. oh my god oh no it's so funny it's so funny but i think you're not alone crap. i think that's a common no response. it's the oh and then i just like and then it's just gonna what slide out how does it come out <laughs> well that is a good question oh god and then what do they do just sew it back up oh, i don't fucking know <laughs> and why doesn't the blood just come shooting out of that hole <laughs> I don't know anything about the human body, clearly. Oh, God. I don't I think need a, would... I, I, Are Valium over the counter in Costa Rica? Yeah. What is it? Sometimes Xanax, something for information can lessen those responses, but I don't think in your case it would. Like, I don't oh. think if you knew the mechanics of it that it would actually ease the your distress. The problem is that I know the mechanics of it. Right, 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 that right. is the, the problem. I ha- Like, I can't get the visual images of, like... Oh, God. And some people can just watch surgery. Mm -hmm. Are you one of those people? I am not like you. You can just watch a surgery. Could you watch somebody? Oh, Susie. Could you watch somebody get a knee replacement? Like have their. Oh, oh, I can't talk about it. Well, I often thought about how, you know, when Uh, I got my C-section, it was an emergency thing. And then they put the curtain up. And I really thought that I could handle it if they would let me watch. <laughs> I really did. I, I wish that I could have, but they won't I, let you. Are you this okay? Is what hap- no, because <laughs> what happens is I picture it and then I start crying for no reason. Oh, God, it's don't an cry. actual problem. Susie, I'm like tearing up. I don't okay, know what's wrong with me. If somebody could explain why I do this, let's just talk about something <sighs> else. It gives me every single. I just feel like I'm like. That person's in so much pain. It's ridiculous. I'll tell you what's not ridiculous, and that is staying organized and productive. There is a company called Notion that I love. It is like a central, customizable workspace that you can tailor to fit your team, or maybe you're just working on a collaboration with some people and you want to stay organized. You can just go there and manage your projects so everything happens quickly, efficiently, in a way that makes sense. And that's kind of like what we all need right now because everyone's doing the hybrid situation or the work from home and you may not even be around your coworkers or your employees. And this is such a great way to stay organized and on top of all the cool stuff you guys have going on. You can learn more and get started for free at notion.so. You can check it out on your own, invite as many folks as you want to see how it works, and then you take the first step toward an organized, happy team today. Again, that's notion.so, N-O-T-I-O-N dot S-O. Um, huh, what else do I have for you? I do have some, oh, Susie, I, yes. ha- I was so excited during book club <laughs> when- okay. Our book, your book was amazing and everybody loved it. The book you picked, remind me of the name. Oh, Hidden Valley Road. Hidden Valley Road yeah. that was about a family with 12. Schizophrenia, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, 12 uh, children, six of which were diagnosed with schizophrenia. Yeah. And we had a wonderful book club discussion and I got an article or I, we were discussing an article in there uh, that was on NPR 
or this uh, uh, interview on NPR with um, a anthropologist, uh, Tanya Lerman, uh, who works for Stanford University, who did research on psychotic disorders. Mm -hmm. This is the most fascinating thing I can't wait to hear. Tell me everything. People with schizophrenia Mm -hmm. hear different voices like hear the voices differently depending on their social and cultural environments okay this is so mind-blowing like and it's not just one-offs like it's you know how we have this idea in the united states like when we think of somebody who has who's paranoid schizophrenic they we think of those voices as being like these dangerous voices oh yeah yeah you want to hurt somebody that's that's the general like consensus of like the the voices often tell me to hurt people or tell me things that I don't like, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of the nature of the hallucinations in the United States. Well, in Ghana, the Africans hear an audible God who told them not to ignore those evil voices, but it gave them a sense of like spiritual connection. Yeah. They got like, they were heralded as special. These people. Yeah. And then in, I believe I'm pronounced, I don't know how to pronounce it. Shanai. Okay. Uh, which is in, I think it's in China, or no, maybe South K- Korea. I have to check. Uh, people hear annoying relatives who told them to do chores and clean up. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. They said why. So the, the anthropologist said what, one of her theories is that Americans think of their minds as these private fortresses, and they mm. have this model that when you hear an audible voice, it means that your mind is broken. And for Aww. people, for everyone, that's so upsetting. And so that's not the case in these other places. There's much more an invitation to think about the supernatural and to think about, like, religious interpretation yeah. of these and them as a spirit. And it gives them much more of, like, a sense of calm. And it doesn't feel like this violation of your private world like it does in America. That is so fascinating. Isn't it? Because mm-hmm. it could impact our treatment of all of this. So in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Hidden Valley Road, I was really fascinated by the descriptions they provided of schizophrenic brains because I never really knew what, what the hell was going on with these people. I knew the, how it manifested and how scary it can be both for them and people around them. But one of the, the descriptions said how if you put these sensors on an, a typical brain... Mm-hmm. And you do like a loud noise. Mm-hmm. The the first one, you know, we all sort of jump and are startled or whatever. But then when the second one comes shortly after, we are less surprised. But uh-huh. schizophrenic brains are equally reactive <gasps> to every single alert. And Whoa! Right? And so they're getting all this information and they don't know what to prioritize and what's like, you know, important. Isn't that fascinating? Susie. Yeah. That's fascinating. (laughs) I know. And it's so understandable. You're like, okay. (sighs) And that's why they love smoking because whenever they smoke, that reaction doesn't happen. They get information in a more typical way. Because it, it, what, like dulls those kind of... The huh. Some way that the ingredients in the cigarette interact with whatever part of that brain that tells them what to prioritize. And so they kind of start feeling typical. Oh my freaking gosh. <laughs> so that's why they're we working on... We don't know anything. <laughs> that's why they're working on medicines that will have the same effect as cigarettes and more long-lasting and <sighs> less de- deadly. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. It's so interesting because it really shows, I mean, we are in the, the just the dawn of this, like, information about the brain era. I'm still, though, but I can't believe that the culture and just your own personal experiences <sighs> in life would have that effect that yeah, you describe. Well, it's so promising because it really, there are like implications for treatment. It says like people can perceive these voices differently. And there was another researcher who worked with schizophrenics to, de- people who are schizophrenic, to develop a, an avatar mm-hmm. that represented their internal voice. Then mm. the researcher would 
change the audio, like it, like um, manipulate the audio to make it say what the researcher wanted it to say. And by having a voice that the person recognizes and the visual of what that voice looks like, say things that are more friendly and more kind, changes the interaction that the person has with the voice. Right. So they can work with the person to make the voice less scary, to make you make it feel like a partner of of something that's working with you you, or maybe just telling you to clean your room. This came up during the meeting and I can't remember the context, but there was something about these things that was similar to what we learned in the um, book, How to Change Your Mind, which was about psychedelics and how when people... Opening up your mind to a lot of options. Yeah. And when they go into these microdosing situations with the information of what it might be like and to know that if they see something scary to just be fine with it just don't fight it (gasps) don't run away don't be freaked out and then it'll pass and you'll be fine if we do that with these folks it would have the same thing maybe yes absolutely right and then uh, Susie, yeah like yes and it just like leads me into so many different conversations because i was having a discussion with my brother the other day I, not the other day. It was like a couple weeks ago, whatever. I love that you Back feel like when you I was need to clarify that. Right. Like, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is like one of those, I can't lie. Th- like, right. I'm, bad li- I'm like, right. it's not technically okay, it what it was. Day. I need to tell people don't even care. Um, so he's a firefighter and we were talking about how we do not need police rolling up. I was saying we do not need police. Like, wouldn't it be great if he didn't have to go? on a lot of these calls that he's really not needed for, that he really need a trained mental health crisis response team Mm -hmm. that doesn't look threatening, that just, you know, because it's now thinking about that jump, that startle thing, being startled. Yeah. Imagine if four police officers run up on you. Yeah. And you're startled with everything. Right. For, of course you're going to you're going to You're going to be defense. irrational. Right. You're going to be irrational. And my brother was like, "Yeah, but like what about the times when they're when it, it when they're violent or what what about, you know, the cases when yeah. those are so few and far between and they I think the only reason they go into those places is because they feel threatened." Right. Possibly. And there does I, need I, to be a variety of responses and I do think we're making progress on that stuff. Yeah. Oh, I just I just feel like it would be so different. And then I hear all these, you know, and he's like, well, what about the one time? I'm like, well, what about all the times that people who are mentally ill accidentally get shot? Mm -hmm. Because those are way more, I think. Right? Yeah. I mean, I would think so. (sighs) And if we, if this type of thing, educating first responders and other, (gasps) you know, even educators, then... That might never get to that point where the yeah. cops or whoever even needs to be called. Yeah. Like, don't come roll up in a uniform, you know. It's interesting because, like, I, I asked my friend Dave once, who's also a firefighter, and uh, I, I was watching a video or something about of a fire, some kind of an emergency, and all the firefighters were so casual and I was like, what is the deal with all you guys just walking up all <laughs> casual to an emergency? Mm-hmm. And he goes, we, ha- we do it that way so that all of you guys stay calm. Because mm-hmm. it's kind of like the air, uh, uh, airline, you know, like flight yeah. attendants freaking out. Uh, you'd like, that's the last person you want to see freaking out on the airplane. Because it's like, oh shit, <laughs> something's going to happen. So you don't want to see the firefighters looking panicked and running up to anything. Because it makes you terrified. And like, so they just mosey in all calm. I'm like, if you guys understand that that how you approach a scene for people who are not mentally ill Mm -hmm. needs to be taken into consideration let's maybe also take into consideration how you guys roll up to somebody who might experience the world in a different way man it is so fat we need some training it's training and education Yeah, and i am sympathetic i would probably feel the same way if my job involved interacting with people that <sighs> yes were irrational or violent or unappreciative i mean yeah. you i'm sure you get real fed up real fast yep but you're right 
I you're mean, so right. And he like- is. And I hear his stories and I'm like, yeah, I couldn't. Nope. I would have no. Nope. I'd be so mad. Like, I'd be so yeah. mad. You know, because well, what they're seeing is like the failures at a systemic level on a oh, personal yeah. level. And yes. so they just think this guy's an asshole and I need to, you know, restrain him or whatever. Instead of yeah. like knowing why that happened in the first place. And it's such a big problem. Oh, I'm just, you know, having my mom experience an injury and like just having to go through a lot of the different parts of the medical system and and just the experience of of that it's totally different you know i am just seeing how broken Mm -hmm. the system is and how we just really i don't know man it's really hard well, so and I think my everyone heart goes sees out to it. anybody who's a caregiver. My heart goes out to anybody who's in a position where they are, you know, uh, struggling with any kind of mobility issues. It's freaking hard. Mm-hmm. Or even just support and resources. Everything is so difficult. You know, it seems like the system is set up for you to go, oh, I give up. Yeah. Just, you know. Mm-hmm. It just feels like that. And so, ugh. That is fascinating, though. And I do hope they can make progress based on that new information because that's totally fascinating. Oh, so cool. Yeah, that stuff, the the stuff about the schizophrenic voices. I mean, if that isn't the coolest thing ever. Um, Okay, what else do I have, fun things do I have to talk about with you? Did you hear... About me. the Wheel of Fortune contestant. Yes. Did okay. you? I didn't watch the video, though. Oh, well, good thing I got it all queued up so that you can hear exactly how long this pause is. Okay, I'll tell you guys what the whole deal is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> on a recent episode of Wheel of Fortune, there was a contestant who was in the showcase what do they call it showcase showdown final no final puzzle <laughs> whatever if it should be called showcase showdown if it's not because that sounds so much that's fun um right. that's oh okay too bad i was like somebody <laughs> has that right that's like a thing um so it's the very last one you know when you're like gonna win a car and everything <laughs> and she the the blank letters oh my god i want to press play but i don't want it to play no stop stop okay um it's Blank, H, blank, blank, S-I-N-G, the, right, blank, blank, R-D. Okay. So, I'm going to play, let's see if I can, I hope I can. I'm going to play how long the pause was. So, she (laughs) said the right. She answered correctly, and I believe she did it before the buzzer. Yes, answer correctly before the buzzer. But there's a rule Mm -hmm. in Wheel of Fortune that... No one knew that about. No one knew. That says you can't pause for In the too middle long. of the sentence or the phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Dumbest rule ever. So if, let's say, the answer was Merry Christmas, you couldn't say Merry Christmas. Oh, right? Is that essentially? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Listen to how long this is, okay. how short this is. Okay? I'm going to be so mad. You're going to be this so mad. This is why I didn't watch it. <laughs> Yeah, this, I, I, here I am. I'm like, you have to <laughs> watch it. You must listen. Okay. okay. Here we go. Volume. Let's see. Volume up. Let's see if you can hear it. Ready? Where's my play? The right. Word. You know, this one's tough because you, you said all the right words, including the word word, but... As you know, it's got to be more or less continuous. We can't give you the prize. And it was the Audi. Oh. Oh, man. That was it. It's Done. ridiculous. Done. I think I counted three hippopotamuses. <sighs> That's stupid. It's... And you lost a car? Yeah. And then they but were just worry. like, sorry, but, but rules the, are rules. But this... Right. That's how Wheel of Fortune was. Wheel of Fortune were being like, freaking jerks about it and then all of twitter was like uh this is ridiculous audi you better freaking step up and so audi gave her the car yeah as they should 
Yeah. Right? In the end, she'll probably end up with more than she would have otherwise. And it's fun to be like a footnote in history. But that's a stupid rule. It's a really stupid rule. I wonder why. Yeah. What do you think? And also, (laughs) what does she think the other... Choosing the right... The, I mean, I, I, the only thing I'm a little bit mad at her for is... The, it's obviously word. There's no other thing that goes there. <laughs> That's what you're mad at. I mean, a little. If, uh, if we, we have to, have to uh, you know, we can't, like, put all the blame on We have to, like, well, you know, but say it's she It's like we always talk about with the challenge Stupid, when they but... do trivia and how it's just different <sighs> when you're under the hot lights, you know? You're, oh, my God. You're so right. You're it's so right. so much more adrenaline and, like, stimuli. I get it. What's this lady's yeah. name? Uh, what is her name? It, you know, they should say. <laughs> because this Wheel of Fortune contestant, so far they've just identified, identified her on CNN as contestant. Oh, uh, man. That's where she should really I know. Really she doesn't even mad. get a name. Oh, Charlene. R- well, you're going to laugh at this. What? You know what her last, na- last name is? Oh, my God. Well, I'll tell you. The, I'll give you a hint. Her answer was kind of garbage. Oh, my God. Trash? Her, <laughs> Char- Charlene Rubbish. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is great. I I'm so glad I asked. That, I love that <sighs> that never, ever fails to right. disappoint or whatever the word is. <sighs> I love it every time. Every single time. Oh, my God. Charlene Rubbish. That's almost as good as Anthony Weiner. Yeah. What's going on with that guy? <laughs> no, for real. Well, last I heard, and let's let's revisit. God, nobody the fact. said that name in like a million years. Let's revisit the fact because I'm sure you blocked it out that I was the last person he retweeted before he got oh, caught the second I, oh time. Oh my god! Oh my and god! And so then people thought I was the girl <gasps> that he was like sending these nudes to or whatever the fuck well talk about being a footnote in history i know i need to find that screenshot um, a footnote or man that was a better sexual <laughs> a right. double entendre that i could use there but <sighs> he so he disabled his twitter right after that and then oh he's been gone ever since but um supposedly he has a job oh, and, i thought you're gonna say supposedly he has a burner account it's called well, this and but don't you know real. he follows me that was what? the last I heard was that he is sort of back on some one of the, I think it was Signal or one of the apps that people use to be secretive. Like a dating thing? Well, you know or like people, more like, you, like your hook, like what is the yeah, one yeah, that was, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh my so, God. That seems know. like a lot of work. That's right. And come on, Anthony, it ain't Anthony, worth it. Come on, weenie. Come on. <laughs> the ween. <gasps> And then his ex-wife, Huma, she um, just published a book this year, and that's oh, all. Man. Yeah, I've been kind of out of the loop of a lot of, uh, of things in the news. Uh, R.I.P. Betty White. R.I.P. R.I.P. Bob Saget. R.I.P. Bob Saget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what happened there? I mean, Do I have a have theory. Info? I want to know your theory afterwards. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Do you want to say it on here? Well, I don't yeah, know. it's not a secret. I mean, as right. soon as what he died think? and they said there was no foul play or drugs, oh. I yeah. said, I bet he had COVID recently. <gasps> and he did. No! And they call it silent hypo... Oh, I forget my the God. word. But, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not a what a, coroner here. I'm just saying that's what I think I happened. Know. And I think we'll be seeing a lot more of this as people recover and then like months or whatever later, they drop dead and they're like, oh, it's a heart attack or whatever. Yeah. Uh, my heart's been doing this weird kind of thing for the, probably the past month or two. And I don't know if it's stre- my, it might be stress related, but I should probably get that checked out because like, what if? I mean, it probably is stress related, but yeah, that's what like my mom was like, yeah, I think you might be under a little bit of stress and it's probably like, I, as I, I'm like twitching my eyes like... Oh God! Uh, no, they I'm do kidding. say but, that that's what happens. The the eye twitch thing is from stress. That is what they say. Yeah. No, I mean that is true. And I remember when I was eight or nine months pregnant. I went and sat out. I had tickets to see Bob Saget at the Improv in Pittsburgh, and I sat outside 
for two hours so that I could be first in line to get the front row. Yeah. And I sat up in the front row with my giant pregnant belly, and he was so funny. And he's so much of a better stand-up than you would even guess because, you know, Full House didn't really showcase his range. Yeah. Um, Well, yeah, right. And then you saw The Aristocrats, right, the documentary? Oh, so good. Yeah, and that's when people really started to realize, like, oh, he's not a Mm one-trick pony. Like, he can be funny in a variety of ways. Yeah, he was so good. I know. I I was very sad. I was very sad to hear that he passed. Yeah. Well, it's, uh... It feels like we're getting to that age. <laughs> I'm getting to that age where all these people, or maybe this is just life. I don't know. Uh, where people who were like these big figures yeah. that you like watch or look up to or some part of your like childhood yeah. are passing away. Mm-hmm. And that's like a totally, I don't know, new kind of, like I never got sad before. And I think ever since Prince died, Prince was the first person I like really, rem- and Mr. Roger. Oh God, I can't even think about all the sad people. That are there. <laughs> That's like a terrible path to go down. But I do want to read one thing that I read or that I, I saw on Twitter or Instagram, one of those things, when Betty White passed away that is so, I thought it was such a good reminder and I wanted to read it to you. Let me pull it up. When did she pass away? Okay. Okay. Um, Nope, that is about the surgeon who had the (laughs) thing. Dr. Zeth. That's about that. Okay, pause. Give me a minute. It's under here. I have my saved things. Saved. And here we go. Okie dokie. Okay, With, while many tributes are describing her as America's grandmother or great-grandmother, I think it's important to remember Betty White never had children. She's an amazing example of how much joy and meaning there is to be had in a life without children. We almost never see such women celebrated in society. I think White did allow, did allow a lot of people to have a better relationship with their grandmothers because in showing her body whole, whole personhood, she helped others to see the see the older women in their lives uh, consigned to grandmothers or mother roles as whole people with a sense of humor, sexual desire, and joy. It's a kind of queerness, I think. And that was Mm -hmm. written by Stephen Thrasher. And I thought it was just so well put because I did not even know that she didn't have kids. Oh, yeah. She was a mom to a lot of dogs and animals. And we all think of her as America's grandmother. And it does make you have better really. I think that's so important. And I think, I don't know, I just keep thinking more and more about how it is totally okay for women to be like, yeah, I'm okay with not having kids. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's And now sure. I'm going to confidently, I think, maybe, change. Confidently, maybe. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, change my... Uh, uh, answer to on bumble to like do you want to have kids to do not want to have kids no yeah why not no (laughs) because i feel no you can that's totally fine i just am surprised by that yeah me too you're because i feel like i I, like i almost want to answer with a joke in this economy (laughs) (laughs) well for sure i mean i get it no doubt about that i just um so right now what is it you say yes maybe or no. You, no, but what is it on your account now? Oh, now it says not sure or possibly, possibly. Po- maybe, maybe, oh, I think, wow. or whatever. You want to change whatever it. the ambiguous answer is. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm thinking of making it because, like, I don't want any bait and switch, like, you know, situations where they think, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, and I'm, st- I'm uh, you know what? Ew, actually, maybe this is something we need to unpack now that I think about yeah, this. Yeah, let's do it. You know what guys say to me all the time? You would be a great mother. Right. I don't, don't know like how I feel about this anymore. Okay, because why? You feel like it's a backhanded compliment? I don't know, because they rare, it's rarely the ones who are like, no, I mean, like, 
it's kind of that what what is the 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 Madonna whore thing of like uh-huh. you're like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's like I I fit in, that's why on Mary Sex Kill I'm always Mary and like nobody's like wanting to bang me <laughs> <laughs> well on the upside they also don't want to kill you which is nice right, that's you know sometimes you know, silver lining like, silver lining there <laughs> they don't want to murder you okay well uh. do you have was I know that it's been a bit of a process going from wanting them to maybe wanting them to maybe now you're saying not wanting them yeah would you say though that there was a moment when you were like you know what forget it kind of in a caregiver role Mm -hmm. where I was like waking up because like I have a routine now and Mm -hmm. I have a routine that all I can think is like, so does every fucking mother. Like every, this is a, this like that you need to do this. I mean, I have one with my dog, but it's very minimal effort and work (laughs) needed, you know? But this is like, before you think this is going to sound every mom, get ready to roll your eyes, moms. Um, you have to go, Oh, let me think about all this other person's needs before I even consider my own. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself doing things like making food, and then I'm not eating it, but I feel like I've mm-hmm. checked the box of like dinner and then I've made this other person food and I'm like, oh, right. I have to eat too. Okay. Like, I get it. And you're right. But it is way harder to do what you're doing because it isn't really sacrificial for, I don't think most moms in, in that regard, like making food and thinking them first it's just instinct i think oh it ain't instinct right. over here and it wouldn't be for me if i were taking care of my mom i'd be like right. you're an idiot i hate you yeah and then it's like i, I have to do her. things I like i had to go through this whole week where i had to be like okay mom here's a here's a list of the things that i provide here are the things that you have i don't know when you're hungry i don't know when you want to brush your teeth I, what I can do is bring you the toothbrush, toothpaste, and water. But you're going to have to be responsible for saying, Sarah, I'd like to brush my teeth. Yeah. Uh, like, I, but that was something that you have to kind of establish. Like, yeah. you know, at first it was like, I think that she was like, like, like this is the morning things. And like, yeah, it's you way harder do for you. That, these things oh. are not what you do as a parent. You get to decide right. all that. <laughs> right. Oh, you mean you don't lift somebody onto a <laughs> toilet? <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> someone your same size you don't have to like someone your same wrestle you know, them i'm like i in 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 good news i do feel like i'm getting some upper body strength that I is that you are that is nice so i am i am feeling good about that and you know and i think it's, it's totally fair if you decide you don't want kids but i don't think it would be similar right. to what you're dealing with right now okay that's good I said the same thing also when I got a puppy and people were like, nope, that's way harder too. So right now kids sound really easy because <laughs> compared to caregiving and having a puppy, I mean, you guys keep saying that it's easier than both of those things. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Anywho, I'm still it. 50% uh, missing 50% of the equation or maybe that's like 90% of the equation. Of what equation? Having kids. Oh, oh, oh. You know. Sperm. Yeah. Yeah, science. Okay. You can only do so much. Every well, day. I think but. reflecting on it is is so good though, and more than most people do. And a lot yeah. of people have kids without reflecting, and then they're like, yeah. "Uh oh," and yeah. then and like all I want to do, yeah, it's I probably sh- I mean, good thing you don't have to like make any life decisions like right here in the moment because like right now I'm like, nope, not doing any of that. Nope, nope, just gonna no. It even I, feels yeah. like that when you just are trying to decide whether to have another, which, by the way, is an incredible privilege if you're in the position where you can decide that. Yeah. Um, but uh, it does feel very scary to make such a huge consequential and and final opinion or, uh, decision. Mm-hmm. Whether you do or don't is final. 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 Woo! That's not too much. In this it's economy? It's too much, right? <laughs> It's too stressful. It's too much. It's too much stress. I know. That's it. That's why I have to just wind it down. (laughs) (sighs) Wind it down. Um, Okay. So, Dr. Death is no... I mean, I wonder how Dr. Kevorkian would feel about being like... Oh, up... Like... Upstage Like his name. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the... um, What is it? The, the, The... 
what the patent on his name, the the, 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 the trademark, the yeah, trademark on Doctor Death ran out, and he was he yeah. Now it's public he got use replaced again. by Joshua Jackson, who did an excellent job, by the way. That makes me think, like, what drugs has he done? He's either mm. really good at pretending, or he mm. has seen people, <laughs> right? Who are like that? Slash has done it. I don't want to. Well, and the but doctor death is still alive. He's just in jail, right? He is in jail. He He's not going to be up for parole until he is, I want to say, 74. I can't believe he would ever get parole. I know. I think it's because they weren't able to pin a lot of things on him. It yeah, was just yeah. that elderly abuse. And and then maybe one. And then um, there was. Was he married? Uh he was married to a stripper that oh, he Lord. got pregnant who then he ended up having two kids with. But they got married and then divorced because she was smart. She was like, I'm I not sticking like, around That's for the thing. This I don't know why I just said, oh, Lord, I'm pro stripper. I just can't. Like, he seems like the kind of guy that would prey upon somebody like that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And then he tried to, and like, and and he kept on wanting her to like start nursing school. And she's like, "I'm not doing that. That's not my life. I this is not what I wanted. No, you. Why do you keep wanting me to do that?" And then he ended up having an affair with his physician's assistant, oh and she testified against him. And he, it was through the emails that he sent to her that call, where he called himself a cold blooded killer that helped put him away. Oh my God, Suze, you got to watch it. It's so good. That is so disturbing. I won't watch it's, it, but I will read about it. <laughs> yeah, because I don't about like it. recreations or anything. No, yeah, yeah. And and there is a mini series, or there's another one. Um, Lifetime. Did, there's a couple of them where they have the real people, and that is just as yeah. I gotta see that. Yeah, yeah. Watch oh, that. It's, oh, what is it called? Mm, it's that one that's on like Lifetime, or I can't remember. But anyways, it's a good one. Okay, then we discuss Hidden Valley Road and also yes. the great science <sighs> on mental illness. And I believe I have uh, linked the audio in our, or put the audio of that NPR interview in our um, newsletter. Uh, uh, newsletter. So that is going to be available. And you guys, it's a quick listen. It's like three and a half minutes and it'll totally blow your mind. You're going to love it. If you aren't signed up, you can sign up for our newsletter on our website. It's right on the homepage down halfway. And it's we don't send anything except once a week sending this newsletter. So you won't get any Yeah, weirdness. all the stuff that you want to look up that you're like, oh, my yeah. gosh, that article they talked about, With where links. where was it? Don't worry. We got, we got it. You, Here boo. you go. We got you. We're doing all the work for you. And then Sarah's super mad at Wheel of Fortune. Yep, real mad at Wheel of Fortune. Um, real mad. I'm always mad at something. I'm like, is there I anything I'm it. not mad at this wing? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you know, it's good. It's good. I'm just, I just let it all They're out. They're asking here. for it. Yeah. You know what I do love? I love <laughs> our merch, which you can get at thebraincandypodcast.com. I like Because the you shoes did that. are out. That's so great. The uh, it's my favorite. segue. Sarah did yes. it. You See? I, do I, love. Yeah, I learned from the best. Yeah, the merch is awesome. I mean, good I work, know. everyone. Everyone. Check it out. All right, kids. We'll see you next time. time. Bye. Bye.